Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the Solar Edge Home Hub ecosystem. So Solar Edge has been around since 2006 back when they came out with their proprietary optimizers. Now this was a kind of a new thing to the solar and storage scene back in those days, uh, unlike anything we'd really seen from any previous manufacturers. At that time, most people were running on string inverters. So when Solar Edge came out with their optimizers, what that did is it let it lets you keep that DC um, string inverter architecture but also mitigated shading and the effects of having panels on multiple different roof planes. And the way those work is they kind of adjust the current and voltage on a panel by panel level. You know, if there's shading or panels facing in a, in a direction that isn't ideal at any certain given time, it adjusts the current and voltage on each panel in order to get the maximum power available power per string essentially. Another thing that they provided was rapid shutdown compliancy. So back then, again, most string inverter manufacturers would have to, you'd have to install, you know, a rapid shutdown box on the roof. And those had, things had a lot of issues and, and really just were time consuming and kind of a pain in the butt. So that's really where Solar Edge made their mark. After that point, just, you know, it really streamlined everything. It gave module level monitoring, which you also couldn't get with string inverters. And it was just a reliable system and, and it just took off. And Solar Edge kind of just grabbed a huge share of the market with their, their DC optimized system. So the Solar Edge optimizers have a 25 year warranty on the optimizers that the solar edge home hub inverter is meant to kind of maximize that ac to dc ratio so it it actually uh, gives you the ability to put up to 200 percent dc to ac ratio so for a 10 kilowatt inverter per se you could put up to 20 kilowatts of solar panels now in most cases you really wouldn't want to do that but you know if you wanted to put three batteries on that inverter where you could you could be producing AC current during the day to your home's loads and to the grid while simultaneously sending DC power to your batteries. Um, you could really kind of take advantage of that DC coupled architecture and that DC oversizing for your AC inverter size. That, that home hub inverter, not only does it allow up to that 200% oversizing for the DC array, um, you know, it's a DC coupled battery it connects to it to where, you know, again, you're, you're maximizing efficiency. So it also comes with these high power inverters. And so the high power inverters, uh, those two units are going to be the 3,800 watt and the 7,600 watt. Those are to maximize off grid power. The way they do that is, um, for those of you that may or may not know solar interconnection rules, Oftentimes, if you have a certain service, especially in areas with combo meters like California or other areas, you're limited to the, to the size of a solar inverter that you can connect to a home's electrical system. So for example, if you have a 100 amp main service panel or combo meter and you live in California and you don't want to upgrade your electrical service because that can be expensive, um, that 3800 watt inverter is meant to max out the inverter that you can put on that service. And so that 3,800 watt inverter is only ever gonna send 16 amps back to that main service panel while the uh, utility grid is operational. But what these high power inverters do when they're used in backup applications, so we'll get into that a little bit later, but when these high power inverters are used in backup applications, when the system goes off grid and severs that connection, to the main service panel, it can then send more current off grid to your backed up loads panel. So for that 3,800 watt inverter, I believe it can jump up from 16 amps to 32 amps. 
And for that high power 7600 watt inverter, pretty sure that's going to jump from 32 amps up to 43 amps. And so that just really allows you to back up larger loads for a utility outage than you would with a comparative inverter storage system um, that could connect to your electrical service. So those inverters, they come standard with a 12 year warranty, but you can extend that warranty pretty easily to a 25 year warranty. Now the battery, uh, that is a 10 kilowatt hour battery. So it holds 10 kilowatt hours of stored energy for later use. It's got 5,000 watts or five kilowatts of continuous output power or max continuous output power. That's for just running all of your loads in your home. It's got up to 7,000 watts of peak power for starting uh, compressors, pumps, um, things like your refrigerator, your freezer, your pool pumps, well pumps, uh, air conditioning units, things of that nature. So the battery chemistry is the nickel manganese cobalt oxide. Now that's for their 400 volt battery. That's the battery that's gonna be offered in the US. They do have a 48 volt that's lithium iron phosphate but that's gonna be in other areas of the world outside of the US. So you can stack up to three batteries per inverter. And these batteries have a 10 year warranty that they're gonna degrade no less than 70% of their rated storage and output capacity. So one uh, interesting thing about that 10 year warranty is it's unlimited cycles. Many manufacturers put a limit on how many cycles you can have Within a warranty period, Solar Edge just caps it at 10 years, unlimited cycles. So next they've got this Smart EV Charger. So that can go up to a 40 amp level two charger. Um, when connected to the grid and solar, you can program it for this solar boost mode. Um, you can also set it to only charge from solar with this excess solar mode. So if you're at home during the day, you got your car plugged in. You don't really want to use utility power in your home because you're trying, you know, that defeats the purpose of uh, having solar in storage. What you can do, you can program that EV charger to only charge your EV once the solar um, both meets the home's demand. Well, basically, once the solar meets the home's demand, any excess will get sent to your EV rather than getting exported to the grid. That smart EV charger comes with a five year warranty. Now next they have this Solar Edge load controller. Now this has been on Solar Edge's website for quite some time now, uh, but they're really just starting to beta test these in the US. Uh, I would imagine they're probably gonna hit the shelves towards the end of this year. But um, what that load controller does, it has two options. One is maximize solar energy. So you could kind of program, you know, say you hook that load controller up to your hot water heater or, you know, your um, air conditioner or any other appliance. You could program it for those people that are on peak rates. So a lot of utilities now don't offer net metering and they may charge you more for your power during peak times of day than other times of day when you know a lot of people aren't using power. So what you can do, you can program that load controller to shed those loads during those peak demand times so you're not paying more for electricity than you need to. The other great thing about load controllers is for utility outages. So when the power goes out, you can program it to shed those high demand loads to keep your battery one from from not being overloaded and shutting down two from just not draining out from using unnecessary loads you know like for example if you only had one battery um, power goes out you may just want to run lights outlets microwave tv internet you know you may not want to be just siphoning off your battery energy your precious energy off to like a water heating element. You know, hey, you got running water, why waste your solar energy on, on hot water if you don't really need it? So again, that load controller can kind of help intelligently manage your loads during a utility outage. 
Lastly, you've got the backup interface. Now, so this, this system can be used with or without the backup interface, and that would be with or without backup power when the power goes out. So a lot of people, again, that don't get net metering, maybe you live in California, um, but maybe you don't have a lot of utility outages and having power during an outage isn't really a concern. Your concern is not paying the utility a lot of money for electricity. So in that case, you can go without the backup interface and just use the solar and batteries to offset your utility bill, kind of store that power during the day the batteries discharge to meet your loads at night or during those high demand times of day when utility power is expensive and just kind of avoid using the utility or maximizing your, your self-consumption of your solar. Um, but again, with that system, when the power goes out, your power goes out, there's nothing there to disconnect from the grid and provide backup power. So if you buy this system with backup power, you're going to have this backup interface. If you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, press the notification bell, or leave a comment down in the description below. Let's get back into it. So that backup interface is a microgrid interconnect device, which is uh, what a lot of people think of as a transfer switch. The difference is a transfer switch is either grid or backup power. A microgrid interconnect device works in tandem with both the grid, the batteries, and the solar. Um, and, and then when the power goes out, it can also provide backup power. So these fall under a different section of the National Electric Code, but essentially um, this is what will sever the connection to the grid and provide backup power when the power goes out from the utility. So you've got the BIEUSGN, that is service entrance rated, and it's got a built-in 200 amp main breaker. So that's meant for a 200 amp service, really, and it's meant to be used as the first disconnecting means from the utility. And then to have basically whole home backup or all your loads downstream. Um, in that case, it's got those built-in CTs for the consumption to measure the, uh, the current coming in and out of your home. And uh, that's a great feature to have for those installers out there because for those of you that don't know, CT installation can be a little bit tricky and a lot of installers um, tend to fail to do that correctly. So by utilizing those built-in CTs, that kind of mitigates that issue. Um, next, for partial home backup or services that are smaller than 200 amps, you can use that BINUSGN. That is not service entrance rated, so it'll have to have some form of service disconnect between it and the utility. It does not have built-in CTs, so you're always going to need to install that external set manually. Um, but, you know, that's kind of great for partial home backup systems or systems with uh, small electrical services. Now, um, all of this, it, really the theme of the Solar Edge home hub ecosystem is maximizing self-consumption, right? You've got all of this all under one system. It's all in one single app or on one single website online, depending on how you like to interact with your system. You can either do it through a phone app or just on an online website. Um, but essentially with, with all these bells and whistles all under one ecosystem, it really just makes everything work together intelligently and seamlessly. You got one point to go to to monitor your system and you've got, you know, everything kind of working together. So, um, and it's all built to really minimize that dependence on the utility grid and maximize the self-consumption of your own on-site generated solar production. And, um, you know, hey, like I tell everyone, no system is perfect. And you know, the Solar Edge home hub ecosystem is not exempt from that. I really love the system. If I were to give any kind of criticism about this system specifically, it would probably be the batteries themselves. They are, you know, a little bit dated. They're not really uh, overly powerful. Uh, they're running on that nickel manganese cobalt oxide 
um, battery chemistry, which um, you know has been popular for years and years and years. It's a well-proven battery chemistry. It's in a lot of the electric vehicles out there. Most solar home battery manufacturers are starting to move to that lithium iron phosphate battery for a few different reasons. I guess one thing with, with having a dated battery, although you may say, hey, it's not the latest and greatest, it's not the most powerful, um, but it's been around the block for several years now. We know what to expect. It's performed as expected. It's got a proven track record. So you kind of have a little bit of reliability there rather than kind of getting the newest thing that's hit the market with kind of um, unknown foreseen issues down the line. Now with that DC coupled inverter architecture, you're kind of left with that weakest link scenario. So, um, you know, it, your, your, your inverter's got a max output, your battery's got a max output, whichever is the lowest of the two is kind of what you've got. So in order to really get that full output of your solar inverters, in most cases for the average uh, residential solar system, you're gonna want at least two of those batteries to really maximize that backup power capabilities when the power goes out. If you're interested in getting a pressure-free, zero-cost quote to put a solar edge system on your home, go ahead down in that description below, click on that Rocky Broad Solar Intake form. Uh, just take a few minutes to fill out a few questions about your specific scenario, and I'll get back to you within a few days, again, with that zero-cost, pressure-free quote. If you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor. Hit the like button, subscribe, press that notification bell, or leave a comment down in the description below. Again, thanks so much to each and every one of you for watching. I really appreciate you all. Till next time, take care.